Hello, I'm Benny Smiles, and this is how I wound up in the video game Hotline Miami 2. I'm gonna do a quick little trip down memory lane, uh, just blast through really quickly everything in my life up to the point where I got the job scoring Hotline Miami 2. Uh, if you want to skip all this intro and nonsense, probably go to about three and a half minutes into the video, maybe four. I don't mind. <laughs> It's not, I, I would not say it's a waste of time, but maybe you've got other things going on in your life. I don't know. Yeah, uh, please enjoy. Yeah, I was playing in like a synth pop band, playing in wedding bands, doing 80s hair metal covers <laughs> every weekend uh, to make a living and teaching Ableton and Logic classes as well. Uh, and around that time, I got into, I just got interested in uh, video games music because it was something that I loved as a kid. Like, I loved playing stuff like Sonic and Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3, and uh, Road Rash 2, but not Road Rash 1, um, like GTA Vice City, all that sort of stuff. And the music is still so powerful to me now. Like it gives me such intense nostalgia to to play those games or hear that music. And it's just like associated with lovely kind of warm times. And I thought, uh, one, it would be a sustainable or one of the more sustainable ways to continue a career in music. And two, it was just like something that I could, I could create that feeling for other people like be part of the soundtrack of their lives that they were like yeah because it was just so important to me so I thought that was cool um so I took a course in music production for video games and it was quite useful uh the best modules were about scoring to picture not specifically for video games but movies and, and tv and everything else so we would analyze the work of great composers like um uh, Bernard Herrmann and Danny Elfman and uh, Hans Zimmer, John Williams, one of my all-time faves, um, Ennio Morricone and stuff like that, and learn learn just tons about modes and keys and modulation and the musical mechanics behind forcing people to feel certain emotions uh, almost against their will. It's kind of manipulative and fascinating and incredible when it's done as powerfully as of all of those people that I just listed have been able to do it. Um, so after that course, I through the course, actually, I was introduced to some developers in Dublin where I lived at the time and wound up scoring a few iPad or iPhone games or just like, yeah, uh, some kids games. And it was rad because I was able to not have to be beholden to popular music taste or what would uh, work on radio or what, anything like that where I got to do like a, a game where you're just cutting this dude's hair uh, it was just like a face on a screen with a beard and first you had to like get a scissors and cut off the beard and then you had to get like a razor and shave the dude or like shave and foam and stuff but anyway I got to do a soundtrack in barbershop style like kind of 1950s influenced um yeah guitars with loads of tremolo and uh, all the percussion was samples of scissors snipping and stuff like that and just get to do, get to do stuff that was unusual and interesting to me which i which i loved uh did like a tropical or like a yeah tropical island a game where it was like kind of sim city but where you're on a tropical island making kind of yeah sorry more like theme park actually where you're making a theme park or like a resort on a tropical island but got to use things like marimbas or and like steel pans and uh yeah just nice kind of tropical sounds and things that i would never get to to, to do in if you're making records for, for somebody else or like someone's solo career or you're i don't know it was just cool. It was just like an opportunity to do stuff that I found really interesting and satisfying. Um, so that takes me on to how I met Dennis and Jonathan from Denetime. So a bird had introduced me to Hotline Miami 1 and I was playing that game. And around that time I just happened to be working on a song that I thought would fit really well in, 
yeah, another Hotline Miami game if there ever was one. So I kind of chanced my arm. I tracked down an email address and it's not hard to do that kind of thing. Like if you know who's involved in a project, it's rarely that difficult to find some way of contacting them. So I recommend taking the piss and chancing your arm whenever you can. Uh, yeah, I emailed Dennis and I had put footage of Hotline Miami 1 or I put this song over footage from like gameplay footage of the first game and I just asked can I use this in my portfolio because I was doing some work in, in video game music and yeah I kind of like I knew that I was chancing my I was hoping that that he would reply and say yeah we like it and can we use it and that's exactly what happened so he got back and said yeah you can use it and we'd be interested in licensing it for the second game would you be interested obviously I said yes and yeah, so that's pretty much it. There's a lot of preamble, <laughs> I realize. My advice would be to get good at your craft, learn how to do it really well, so that it's competitive with other people doing similar things or better than other people doing similar things. And if it's not at that level, then it's probably not at the level that it needs to be so yeah just keep practicing and just get better uh do take chances chance your arm be respectful in doing it but uh, people are just people uh at the other end of an email address or phone number or a twitter handle or whatever else and usually if it's not going to take up too much of their time and you do it in the right way a lot of people will be just in, like willing to give you a chance or willing to at least click a SoundCloud link and if they like it, rock and roll. And if not, yeah, try someone else. My favourite thing about doing these videos is getting your comments and your questions. Please do leave them below. If you find the video useful, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. I, I would really appreciate your support on Patreon. The link is below and I'm going to, well, I think that I'm going to introduce a new tier that would allow each patron to submit a song, one song a month, I think would be probably practical for me to listen to and provide video feedback on as I listen to it. A couple of people have said that that would be really useful. So I'm going to, I'll trial it. Let me know below if you think that that would be useful to you. And otherwise you can buy my records on Bandcamp and all those links are in the description. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of it, man.